Hi friends! <laughs> Welcome to Wednesdays with Whitney. It is just me today, so thanks for tuning in. I'm going to be talking about some really exciting things that are happening at Ivory House Photography. First, I wanted to start talking about, um, a lot of people ask me, how did you get into this thing? And um, I was shooting a wedding on Saturday, a really, really amazing wedding. And it was kind of towards the end of the night, it was dark out and I was, I just kind of scooted out the door for a moment to get a breath of fresh air. And somebody came up and started this conversation, like how did you get into this gig of photography? Because for so many people, photography is something that they love. They love having, taking images, whether it's on your iPhone or if you have a DSLR camera, if you have a little bit more of a, a bigger rig. Um, and it's something that people are really passionate about and I've somehow managed to make it my whole life and business, which is pretty cool. And I kind of had this out of body experience where I realized that, yeah, I've that it is pretty cool that I've been able to make a business and a livelihood out of something that most people have as a hobby. So I wanna tell you a little bit about this journey and how this all started. So my first photos that I remember taking, my first conscious photos, um, I got a point and shoot camera, I think when I was 15 or 16, and I was really bored at my, um, my mom's aunt and uncle's house one day and I just took this point, point and shoot camera out and I started photographing around the neighborhood. And I took all these pictures and you know there was nothing really going on. I was just taking pictures of patterns and colors and things that I was attracted to. And I came in and I showed my mom and she was like, well, these are okay. Um, and so with that encouragement, I went to, um, I started, I showed them to my photojournalism professor um, in, in high school. So I went to my journalism professor and was like, hey, are these okay? Like, should I do something about this? And she was like, yeah, you should start taking photo classes. So my very first time handling a camera was a um, old 35 millimeter Canon camera and I took a black and white photography class from Mr. Weiss um, at Johnston High School and I will forever remember that class. Mr. Weiss um, recently passed away but he made such a huge impact on his students and I will always remember that everybody knew that you couldn't get an A in his class. Like you, you know, because people would take, they thought they were taking art for an easy A, and Mr. Weiss would not give A's. And I was traditionally like kind of an A. Sometimes if it was a math or science topic, I would get a B, B plus. Um, but I, I second thought, I second guessed myself on taking this class because I didn't want to lower my GPA. And I decided to do it anyway. And I remember, if you've ever taken darkroom photography, you know the struggle. You know that you will ruin your film about 300 times before you get it right. And I remember on my second assignment, we were processing our film. We were, you know, shaking it, going back and forth. And I had ruined maybe my third roll of film and the assignment was due the next day. And I remember coming home in the middle of the day and sitting on my mom's um, bathroom tub while she was, I don't know, she was miraculously home and saying like, I should just quit this. I should quit this. And she's like, well, okay, do it. Like if it's too much stress, just do it. And I didn't because I loved it. And I cannot tell you how many times um, since that day when I was 16 or 17 that I have thought that about photography. And of course things have gotten, different things have gotten hard. Different things have been what I thought could be a breaking point, but it was that first breaking point that I remember so vividly that I said, no, I'm gonna do this anyway. Like it's really hard and I'm gonna do it. Um, so I took that class and then I ended up going to college and I knew that I had to have a skill set. I had to leave college with a skill set. So I ended up uh, majoring at University of Iowa in journalism and photography. So I knew with photography that I wanted to be artistic, I wanted to be creative, but photos, People get paid, I knew people got paid money for photos. That's all I knew. And I knew that I enjoyed interacting with people. So I was the person running around um, talking to people and writing articles. And then I was doing photojournalism and I ended up with my BFA, my Bachelor's of Fine Arts. And I gotta be honest guys, I was never, um, at least that I recall, I was never the best photographer in that in, in my classes. I always struggled. I learn actually quite slowly. Um, and I'm not a technical person. I've always really relied on my personality and my ability to go along with people to do, to really elevate my work and my, um, 
my talents. So I go through this four year program. I'm, a, I'm still obsessed with photography. And as we all know, 2008 happened and there was a crash and I thought, well, what the, what the heck? Oh, another super important thing that happened to me um, is this this old retired professor sorry not old this retired professor um he's one of the the youngest retired men that i've ever uh had the privilege of working for um but he was a retired biology professor and he was looking for a someone to work at his studio and I was the only one who went out and said like, hey, I'm willing to drive 20 minutes out to Solon, Iowa, probably 15 minutes out to Solon, Iowa, and work for you. And I went out, I interviewed, and he became my mentor, and I hope that he watches this, um, Richard Solon. He was the guy that taught me about lenses. He was the, taught me the, guy, the guy that taught me about ISO. He was the guy that took me on my first wedding, my first eight, 10 weddings. I shot weddings with him that first season. I learned all about Photoshop. I learned all about uh, Bridge back when we were using Bridge. And because of working with him, um, he was so generous with his knowledge. I also got to drive his uh, vintage Porsche, um, stick shift vintage Porsche, which is like one of my favorite things that I've ever done. We like went on the winding road and did that. Um, so his, while yes, I have a degree in this, when I was working for him is when I really learned the ins and outs of how to use my camera. So because of him and because of just all the encouragement, I ended up applying to grad school. Um, in photography because I also had a, I have an uncle that's a photography professor so I knew that like maybe I could teach with this thing I love um, so I applied to a couple schools I think I applied to five I got rejected from um, all of them except that I was waitlisted at RIT so RIT at the time was the top I haven't actually, I don't really tell people that, but I was waitlisted at RIT. Um, so like didn't immediately get in, wasn't immediately accepted. Um, and I, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought, Winston's right here. So I ended up getting, somehow they said, hey, we your spot opened up um, and I went to visit. And at that same time that I went to visit, I got a call from, I think it was University of Oregon, I can't quite remember. And they said that I'd been accepted. And I was like, wait, I've been, I've been rejected from all these places and then somehow I'm getting accepted. Um, I ended up choosing, <coughs> excuse me, I ended up choosing RIT. And for several reasons, um, I fell in love with Rochester the second I went there. I ended up living there for seven years, which we'll get to. Um, but I loved that it was a super technical program. It has a really amazing legacy. Um, and so I moved to Rochester when I was 22 years old. Rochester, New York. Um, it's in Western New York, for those of you who don't know. And I went to grad school there for two and a half years. And I have to say that getting my MFA was uh, one of the hardest experiences I've ever had because what I, what an MFA is that I didn't really realize is really they just kind of um, they disassemble you brick by brick and they take you down to your base level and I think that a lot of my education was learning how to defend myself and learning who I was and learning yes about photography but really more how to exist in a world of opposition. And at the end of that two and a half years, I created a thesis project and I had to defend myself. And um, I remember one of my favorite professors telling me that I, if there were awards, that I would win the award for most improved. Um, so I think my story is one of, I've never been, I've maybe never been like at the top of my class when I started, but I've always worked the hardest to be, to get to where I need to be. And that and RIT was another example of that. So as I graduated from RIT, I was looking for a job and I was really just looking for anything. I was kind of in a weird time of year. It was November and um, my chiropractor told me that he knew somebody who was hiring a, a studio manager, a photography studio manager. And so I submitted my resume. I'd never met this person. I submitted my resume and she gave me a call and said, come in for an interview. And that's when I met uh, my best friend and boss for four years, Natalie Sinascali. So a lot of people, when I say that I have my, <coughs> sorry guys, allergies. A lot of people, when I tell them that I went to undergrad and got my master's in photography, they attribute my skill or how, what I know about business or how I run my life to that. And I have to say that absolutely none of what I learned in school 
has um, contributed to how I run my business or really how I interact with people. Um, the two people that I worked for, Richard, who I mentioned before, and Natalie, who I worked for for four years and worked alongside her and started shooting tons of weddings on my own with her and really got to learn what it was like to interact with people and make a meaningful impact through photography. Um, those were the people that taught me <coughs> how to make this thing happen. So when I came home, it was really because I had had the support of Natalie for four years learning and growing. And that is my combined knowledge of photography. Yes, I have degrees. I've also worked for people. I shoot upwards of two to three hours a day at this point. And then on wedding days, I shoot upwards of 12 hours a day. So, hey Lucy, can I get some water? Um, so when this is, so when people are like, oh, you're great, I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Anything that you do, as much as I do it, I, you get good at, right? <coughs> so sorry, guys. Thank you, one moment. Oh my gosh, what a relief. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna give you guys some of this knowledge. Now it's a crash course, but I am introducing um, education classes to Ivory House. So I'm super passionate about education. I actually taught while I was in grad school. I taught photo while I was in grad school. And then I taught at University of Rochester for three years while I was working with Natalie. And I have loved the teaching element, but now I wanna teach through Ivory House on my own terms. And I have so many adults and teenagers coming to me and saying, I have this DSLR and if you, um, if you don't know what a DSLR is, I'll just break it down. It's a camera with a detachable lens, okay? So a digital camera with a detachable lens. If you have one of those, you have a DSLR. So if you have one of those cameras and you got this toy and you're like, hey, how do I use it? How do I take it off of auto? How do I optimize my images? I have designed a class for you. So the very first thing, yay, Anne, I'm glad you're excited. I hope you join. Um, so if you're interested in things like, okay, how do ISO, aperture, and shutter speed interact with each other? And you're like, I don't even know what this means, right? So this is the first thing. You don't even know what these words are. I'm gonna teach you what those words are because exposure, which is how you make an image look the way you want it to look, how you make a face not too bright or too dark, that is the basis of photography. Light comes into a sensor and creates an image. So I'm gonna teach you the three things, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, and how those interact with each other and how you can create a beautiful image. Now there's so much more to taking a good photo than that. At this point, when I photograph, it's a reflex. You know, I'm not even thinking about it. I'm thinking about composition and lighting and posing and smiling while there's 50 family members circling around me at a wedding. Like all of those are the things that my brain can be on because I don't think about those other things. But you have to start somewhere. So we'll also talk a little bit about What's good lighting in a photo? When you're taking photos and it's turning out badly, let's talk about why. And um, we're gonna talk a little bit about composition and we'll talk about those modes on your camera. So there's like P mode and AV mode and M mode. And you're like, what are these modes? We're gonna talk about modes. We'll also do a little bit about white balance and what that fun thing is. So, if you are interested in learning, the classes are gonna be two hours. They're gonna be a little two hour boot camps. This is an introduction crash course. At some point, I think I'm gonna release a bit longer of a class. So once, um, once we get some momentum and I really figure out what people need, I'll of course always expand on things. But our first couple classes are gonna be in June. So I'm having an adult series. So that's 18 and up, so college to, to all learners, um, and those classes are gonna be on June 14th and 19th. Uh, is that right? Sorry, no, nope. adult classes are June 13th and 25th. I'll post all of this. And those are gonna start at 5.30. And then I'm also offering high school classes. Thank you. Okay, so high school classes are gonna be during the day because I figure high schoolers are out of school. Hopefully most of their jobs are in the afternoon, but the two days that I'm doing the high school classes are June 14th and 19th. So um, I'm gonna post all of that, but if you're interested in classes, reach out to me. Um, if you have a group of people that are interested in doing classes, let me know. I can be flexible on dates if you have, say, six to eight people that you all wanna get together to do classes, but um, I'm really passionate about helping pe people take better photos because I think 
there's so many moments of your life that get to be that deserve to be captured and I can't be there all the time so thanks so much guys I'm gonna be, be posting a ton more information on this and I hope to see you all in one of my classes thanks bye